Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. This is episode number 19 of Davies Analysis. And in this video, I'm going to help you with mid-game rotates and help you improve at your mid-game rotates and what not to do and what to do. So I think this will be a very beneficial video for you guys. Also, just wanted to plug in my VOD cord. It's $3 buy-in to people that aren't known in the comp scene. So you can DM me on Twitter, DavyTV underscore, if you want to join this Discord. It's only $3. And yeah, let's get right into the video, guys. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to show you Plupin and Quackle, um, their heats. Their, they made Heat 3 together, and they did it in two weeks, which is pretty impressive. Before, you want to bash them for messing up certain rotates. They're inexperienced. This is their first set lobby together. I'm pretty sure Quackle is zero earned, and Plupin has made money, like, one time. I'm pretty sure. So, don't bash them for it. They qualified for heats. They qualified for one heat in two weeks, which is very impressive. They only played two qualifiers together. So, that's very impressive from them. They're a good duo, and they have a lot of potential. But, I've audited their games with them, and they struggled with mid-game, I noticed, a lot. So, I want to go over their mistakes so you can learn from them, so you can make sure you don't make these same mistakes. So, I think this will help you guys out a lot. But, um, let's get right into it, though. So, right here, they're looking pretty good. Hold on. Let me turn the volume down real quick. Oh, it's already down. Perfect. Okay. So, they're, they're in a really good spot right here. So, they're pr almost center. They have this tower claimed. And they're playing Surge right now. This is this is a really good spot right here. Because you can hold kids from across the water. Um, you can trade with a lot of teams. So, this has a lot of opportunity to spot right here. Um, if you watched my last Surge video, it's all about holding congestion and staying in front of the congestion. So, yeah. But, um, let me make sure damage effects are on. Yeah, they're on. Okay, perfect. All right, let's get right into it, though. I'm a 4X from here, because basically they're just going to be trading Surge. They have a keg down, which is great for trading Surge. And we're just going to watch their mid-game rotates and see what happened this game. And we're going to check over some other games as well, because they messed up on mid-game a lot. And I think you guys can learn a lot from this, I'm not going to lie. Like, a lot of people struggle with mid-game rotates, and people told me in DMs to make a video on this, so that's why I'm doing it. So, all right, let's look at the pool. So... You should always be planning your rotates before it pulls. So start thinking on the rotates. Start scouting. Like, you want to scout even before zone pulls, possibly. Like, right now they're focused on surge, which is which is fine. But you can multitask. Like, you want to tr try and pre-plan your rotates. You don't want to come up with a rotate on the fly. So right when the zone pops, they can keep looking for surge. They need to, obviously. But they can maybe pre-plan as well. So I actually don't mind what they do here. They're going to stay on edge elevated and they're gonna look for surge they're not gonna early rotate which i find fine because if they early rotate acorn mountain that's what i call this mountain over here is gonna hold is gonna spray them for surge and then this team right next to them they obviously need surge you can tell and they're gonna spray them and then they're just gonna get held by this team like it's gonna be a mess if they rotate in early so that's why i like this call from them to just sit here get their surge hold duos and rotate in a little bit later which is completely fine i like that call i think it's the smartest thing they could have done in this situation right here so yeah they're gonna keep looking for surge though 76 up and surge is gonna pop once the zone starts closing and it's gonna be active once it's closed they're 19 above so they're gonna need to get a lot of damage in but they have a lot of heals so they can trade if it gets like down bad but what a 4x from here it's just them getting surge holding teams they got themselves in a really good spot. So if you have experience in set lobbies or even scrims, you can try it out and stack scrims too, like Vital. You can like learn surge routes and where to go on certain zones. That's what pros do. In set lobbies, they have the experience to know, okay, this zone, we're going to go to this surge spot. This zone, we're going to go to this surge spot, and etc. So they have a little spot right here for this certain zone, which is great. And this spot is really good. So they're trading with this team. This team is getting lit up. Ploop is doing great damage. 200 above. And then we got some shambles kids rotating in late. And they're basically just holding congestion. Now, they get a max pull, right? But they're not going to be able to rotate this yet. Because there's kids around them that need surge. So waiting right here is fine. Listen, if you're going to get extremely shambles rotating in early then don't do it like don't force a rotate that's not there this rotate is not there right now they would have to burn so many mats to rotate and surge is active so they're just gonna get lit up and they're gonna get lobbied and die because kids need surge so you have to really think on if it's a good idea to rotate and right here it's not so they're they're not gonna rotate which is fine they can rotate when everyone else is focused on their own rotates they see how desperate this team is for surge if they rotate this team is just gonna jump on them they're getting hit by Surge, so they're being patient, and they're going to try and kill these kids, potentially. But yeah, it like I said, 
I really like what they're doing here because they have to do this. They have to sit here. They have no choice because kids need surge around them. They'll get griefed. But now, before zone starts pulling, I like them going down and getting ready to rotate because you have to go when zone's pulling, obviously. So, this is fine, though, because the team is fighting to the left, and then they're very aware of the team to the right. They're going to burn a lot of brick here and then refarm. One thing that's underrated that you guys need to learn is tax sprint, box, recharge, tax sprint, box, recharge. So recharging your tax sprint is an underrated concept that a lot of pros do. And you recharge it on refarm if you can. So if you can recharge your sprint on a refarm, like right here, he's sitting here, he's recharging, and then he's going to sprint again. Perfect. And he's conserving mats as well. and gain, Like he's losing mats and then getting the mats back. So, okay, he's going to get held. So I like him pausing here for a second, not rushing the rotate when it doesn't need to be rushed. Make sure the team in front... So the team in front of them was holding them for a second, right? So they're going to just sit here, stagger or pause, whatever you want to call it. Wait for the attention to not be on them for a bit. And then they're going to rotate in, which is perfect. This is really good. And while they're doing that, they're going to hold these teams for surge, which is great. They're in front of congestion, which, and they're holding congestion. And if you watch the surge video, you understand that concept perfectly. So this is fun. They're going to heal up. I like the chugs over the big because they need to get in now. And you sometimes when you're rotating in late, you have to elevate and you have to burn mats. And that's just how it is sometimes. And if you're early, you don't have to really elevate, not going to lie. But when you're rotating in late, you have to elevate. They have to elevate here so that they can live. And elevating helps your next rotate. You'll have so much more vision and information before rotating the next rotate. So this is fine. Um. All right, then they get a max fourth zone. And this is where it goes wrong. As you can see, they have X's here. Their heals are not that bad. Like, their mats are not the greatest, but it's they're, they can work with what they have here and get a good game out of this. So, I'm going to show you what goes wrong in... Um, hold on, let me turn keys on. Okay. I'm going to show you what goes wrong here, okay? So, like I said earlier, you don't want to rush rotates that aren't there. But, if you miss out on an opportunity... Where a rotate was there, you sold. Because this is your mindset in this meta. It needs to be early, 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 early. Right? You need to rotate in early. You cannot be the team that's getting held. You need to you cannot be the team on congestion. So if you have the opportunity to rotate, you have to rotate. You have to. You cannot be slacking, right? So alright, so let's watch this. I'm gonna show you this like multiple times to make sure you guys understand what went wrong with Quackle and Plupid's rotate here. So I'm gonna fast forward a bit. And, all right, so fourth zone is right here. This is fourth zone. No one's in fourth zone yet, right? No one. So I want you to watch Tahi and Bank and Shadow and Walkers, okay? So, and Jack and Nosh, too. I want you to watch everyone on this side of the map, okay? So let me get back in this little position so that you can see. So I'm going to 1x from here, okay? So 1xing. Let's see when Tahi, Tahi and Bank go really early because no one can hold them. Why wouldn't they go in zone right now? No one can hold them. They are very aware of the zone pool. They say, okay, no one, no one's in zone. Let's just go in now. And then they're going to be the team that holds other kids for surge. They can get potential refresh refreshes out of it. So, yeah, so really good play by them. And you you guys need to do the same thing. You need to be on, you need to be on top of it. When zone pulls and you can rotate, you rotate. As simple as that. And just another uh, little tip, a little reminder. These guys are in congestion back here. This team is not in congestion. Look how easy your life is for this team. Right? They can hold congestion. But the thing is, sometimes you have to be in congestion. Like, if these teams are landing, like, across the map back here by, like, Reality or Rave Cave, then they're going to be edge. That's just how it is sometimes. If they can manage to get in front of edge, that's crazy. But sometimes it's just how it is. And so far, I think Plupid and Quackle have been doing a fine job on their rotates, but they kind of messed up right here. So, yeah, let's get back into it, though. So, Tahi and Bank, they go they go in. They burn a little bit of wood. They can refarm, and then they're in zone. Per so, now... <clears throat> Sphinx and Kicks can probably get a free rotate as well. They can go to this brick. Also, same with Shadow and Walkers. They have a free rotate as well, so they need to be on top of it. If Shadow and Walkers lets Bank and Tahi set up to look back at them and hold them, then they're going too late. So, <clears throat> alright, let's play it out, though. So then Shadow and Walkers decide to go. And they have to burn quite a bit of mats here. Because this team's set up to hold them. 
So, which is unfortunate. And I'm pretty sure they're a grapple team as well, just to let you guys know. So their rotate is a bit easier. But as far as their timing, they went just a tad bit late. But that's fine, though. Because it's not, it's it's recoverable. Now I want you to look at Quackle and Plupid, right? They have information and vision because they're so elevated. And what we don't get out of them is they don't look to find if this rotated, if this team rotated yet. Like, they don't look to see if they left. So, like, I'm going to, we're going to go back now. <clears throat> and we're going to watch Quackle's PV right here and Plupid's. So, they're sitting here. <clears throat> if you look at the map at the bottom right, Tahi and Bank, they're rotating right now. So the team, the only team that can hold them already rotated in zone. That's the only team that's a threat to them is the team that already left. So why are they still sitting here? Because like, like why, why would you still sit here? So you would like, if you're Quackle and Plupid here, you need to be like, okay, zone pulls max. Can we rotate now? No, we can't. Tahi and Banker here. Well, when they go, we need to go. They'll build for us too. If we just follow them. We can shoot them in their back, maybe for Surge. They'll build. Just don't crack them, because then they'll stop. We don't want them to stop. We want them to keep going. So let's wait for them to go, and then we're going to go, and we're going to follow their old builds and get in. We're going to get in zone before they can hold us, because if they can hold us, then we're going to get shambles. We're going to lose all of our heals, mats, etc. So that needs to be their thought process here, not whatever else they were doing. So I want you to watch how late they go. It's not about going left. It's not about going right. It's about how late they go. So Shadow and Walkers, they're going to go in. And they have a free rotate right now, and they're just not going. They're still sitting up here. No one can hold them. Now Quackle's thinking about the rotate. But it's really late now. Now they're going to be moving with congestion. There's a solo right there getting ticked by Surge. He's going to jump on their back. Why wouldn't he jump on their back? And that solo has to go last minute. He has to. He doesn't have a choice. So he's going to go last minute. Now look. You see Tahi and Bank. You see Walkers and Shadow. They went early. They are holding Quackle and Plupid. Quackle and Plupid can easily avoid this situation right here if they go with the crowd, if they follow them before they can set up camp. Like, they set up and they're ready to hold them. That's how you know they went too late. So, now they're going to get held. And now they're going to pause, stagger. And now here's another issue. Like, first off, they shouldn't even be in this situation at all. They shouldn't be in this situation at all, right? But here's another tip. If you are in the situation and you are rotating late, you have to put yourself towards congestion. Because Quackle is going to the left right here. There's a lot of open space over here. You're a thousand percent going to get lobbied if you're not with congestion this late. So if he puts himself right here, he's in a sandwich. He's getting sprayed by Fashion Pams too and all these teams over here. So if you're in this situation, you go towards congestion. Even though it looks scary to go towards them, you have to. And you have to elevate as well because you're rotating late, etc. But if they would have rotated right before Tahi and Bank, if they would have rotated right when they rotated so they can just follow them, follow their builds, get some surge out of it, then they could have been the team boxed up holding the other teams. They can get a refresh out of that, potentially. They can get surge out of that. So I hope you guys learned on how they messed up this rotate. I'm going to play it out. And I've gotten a lot of DMs on, like making a video on mid games so hopefully this helps you guys this is a set lobby as well this is heats and don't bash quackle and plupid they're a good duo they qualified for heats they in two in two weeks like they're good and they just lack experience that's all it is and they'll learn from it it's all good i've already fought it with plupid because he wanted me to and i also wanted to as well and the solo kills both of them and i mean that's just how it is sometimes like they went at the wrong time, and Acro made a good play because that's the only thing he can do as a solo. So we're going to go into one more game, and I want to show you some more mistakes from them, and then that's going to be the end of the video. So let's get right into the next VOD. All right, so this is the last game we're going to VOD, guys. Um, I want you guys to remember this, though, before we get into this VOD. So people wonder why Queasy is so good at no build and why a lot of the Tier 1 IGLs are so good at no build. Because they're gods at mid-game rotates. So, they understand how to use mountains and using LOS, line of sight, to do certain rotates. So, you have to do the same thing in set lobbies. You have to use the terrain to, like for as an advantage, I should say. So, that's why Queasy excels in no build. Because he uses the terrain for an advantage. So... I don't know if that makes sense, but some of you guys will get it, some of you won't. But 
as we go into this VOD, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. So, okay, so they're in their search spot for this certain zone, and then they get the second pull. And not going to lie, at this certain time, they're not really going to get too much surge out of the spot anymore, and they have to focus on their rotate. So I want to show you what path they decide to take, and I'm going to tell you what they should have done, which is what I think. So, okay, this is the zone right here. And you have to think ahead. You have to think, okay, where are teams going to... Where are they going to be? And you want to avoid mountain teams that are up on elevation because they're those are the teams that are going to hold you. So, for instance, there's going to be a team up on this mountain. There's probably going to be a team on this mountain, but in this case, there isn't, which is actually crazy. So, if they could be elevated up here, bro... They would get so much surge on the kids. Like, you don't want to be in congestion. So they can, like, get in zone right here and hold congestion. But they didn't go up this mountain. Maybe they didn't have any info that a team wasn't up here. But if they had that info, bro, they are chilling. Because they could just go up that mountain and get so much surge. And, like, just being up there would be so good right here. Because they can hold so many kids and get so much refreshes. And it's just a good spot to be elevated so you can get surge and etc. But... They didn't have any vision on it. I mean, any information if a team was there. Okay, so they see they see builds right here. So I guess Quackle assumes that there's a team up there. So that's fine. But I want you guys to remember, if you don't have information on if a team is still in their base, just spray the wall, bro. Like, the last game that I showed you, they could have just sprayed Tahi's wall to see if they're still there or not. And then they could have just went. And right here, the same case... If they have to rotate somewhere, they can just shoot this wall, see if there's a team there. If there's a team there, then they want to go a different pathway where this team can't hold them. You need to rotate in certain pathways, use the terrain as an advantage, and rotate in a way where you won't get shambles. Like right now, they have really good loot, so we're just going to keep going. Um, Let's see what they decide to do, and then I'll tell you what I would have done. Okay, so they go down here, and then they get sprayed by Illust, and... They didn't see that team, which is unfortunate. They didn't see that team rotating. So right now they're going to this building down here to refarm. And now they're going to this gas station. And <clears throat> personally, I don't like this pathway. I don't like being down here. I like, I would rather be like elevation. Or, uh, yeah, I don't like going down at this gas. If they could have wrapped this hill, that would have been really good because no one was up there. Or personally, I would have went early. If they're in the surge spot up here, I would have went early and used the water as an advantage to quickly swim and get to where these red guys are or these purple guys. Like, if they could have, like, gotten to where they're at, these guys are in a great spot, in my opinion. Like, this zone pool is really good for where they land and where they were located, but they decide to sit up here and not gain really any surge out of it, and then they went a little late. Like, if they can rotate this early, use the water to get in right here at the spot. I know there's a bush right here, and there's a lot of brick in this area that they can refarm and hold kids. That would have been a better decision. But there's no one on this mountain as well. That would have been a god decision as well. But And when I say what I would have done, I mean what the right thing to do is, in my personal opinion didn't mean to make it sound what it wasn't okay they get really lucky though that this team isn't frying them the team on the mountain um okay so they're 120 above surge they're gonna need a lot more here i'm letting you know right now 12 kids need to die and they need surge they're gonna need more surge they have good heals they have good loot they don't have enough surge right now a lot of kids need to die they're gonna drop below if they don't like work on their surge so here's the thing mid game rotates and surge need to be in sync like you, your mid game rotates need to make sense right let's keep that in mind as they rotate this so right now they're getting in deep but you just cannot get in deep if you don't have surge where are you going to get surge in the center zone you're not going to get a lot of surge like maybe you'll get some surge but it's just luck at that point so if you know you don't have a lot of surge getting in deep isn't the priority the priority is putting yourself in a spot where you can get surged so you can stay alive in this game because their loot is so good right now and <clears throat> let's keep watching them rotate in deeper when they don't have the greatest surge like they're 135 above and a lot of kids need to die they're gonna drop below if they don't work on surge and right now they're just not in a good spot if they're anywhere in this area 
if you watch my surge video, you know this whole meta with surge is holding congestion, getting in front of people, looking back and holding them. That's just how it is. And if you're rotating in center deep, you better have a lot of surge, bro, because it makes no sense to rotate in deep with no surge. So if they sit in this area where they just came from on this hill, or like I said, rotate early and claim this area, which I think is really good, a really good surge spot from personal experience. Um, things would work out so much better for them because they can hold all these kids that are rotating in late that pull max zones when they get a good zone. They should take advantage of the good zones, and they didn't here. They get in really deep. They're 30 above. And then they're going to die to surge. And they're going to panic for surge. because now. All right, so listen, right? This is a god rotate if they have surge because, look, this next zone pull, they can hold so many kids, but it doesn't matter because they weren't good on surge. So this rotate... It was a good rotate if they have surge, but they don't have surge, so the rotate makes no sense. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So now they're 9 below, and they're going to start getting ticked, and they're not going to be able to find any surge because they're center zone. I mean, kids have to rotate to them, and they're only 32 below, but I'm pretty sure they're just not capable of getting the, the one tag that they need. Yeah, they're... Yeah. I think Poopa just panicked there, and that's just lack of experience, which is fine. He'll learn from it and go next, but... But yeah, your rotates need to make sense with Surge, always. You gotta be thinking about the bigger picture. So they made a mistake in that regard. And now they're gonna get ticked and just slowly die with great heals that they once had. And I'm gonna show you. Okay, so they're 25 below. And Quackle gets hit hard. They're losing more heals. Now he has one mini. You saw their heals before. They're 30 above, but... It gets to a point where the game gets unrecoverable, and they're going to need a blessing to come back from this game after getting hit by Surge that much. They lost all of their heals. They will need a refresh if they want to do good this game. A big gamble play is needed from them, but how are they going to make that gamble play when Quackle is 102 HP and Ploopit is 122 HP, and everyone else is pretty healthy in their vicinity, so it's hard to recover from this. Yeah, and there's not much he can do. I mean, nah, he should have built more, but, it, like, I don't know. They're kind of already going next. They would they would have needed a miracle. Poopa could have built more, but, I mean, they messed up mid-game pretty early on. But, yeah, but that's going to be the last VOD we're going to watch. Um, No disrespect to this duo. They're really good, obviously. And... Um, they just messed up two mid-game rotates in the two games that we watched, and hopefully you can learn from it. I wanted to make this video so that people can learn from their mistakes on mid-game, because I know a lot of you guys are probably making the same mistakes and don't even understand the mindset of what you need to do to rotate mid-game. You probably don't even understand the concept of it, and that's early, 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 early hold congestion, but if you can't go early, then don't, you, don't go early. Like Your rotates just need to make sense, and you need to pre-plan and prep certain rotates before zone pops and when zone pops and you need to just be on it you need to be focused you need to make sure that the team in front of you left spray their wall to see if they left and then rotate behind them spray them maybe so that they build for you but don't crack them if you crack them then they stop and then they're going to hold you and then it's going to be a staggered rotate on your part so yeah just use a lot of thought with your rotates and practice them in scrims like this whole meta there's no rotation but grapples and if you don't play grapple grapples like you need to know how to mid game rotate and it's not that hard if you just practice it in scrims practice your rotates it doesn't even have to be with your duo if you're an igo like you could practice rotating by yourself and also it's not all on the igl the fragger can use his brain too on certain rotates to be like i see a rotate follow me like that's what makes a fragger better is a smarter fragger that could IGL if you wanted to in certain situations. That's why Epic Will is the best. He can do it all. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. Um, Three dollars to join my VOD cord. Uh, you can DM me on Twitter. And I hope you guys enjoy. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already. More videos like this on the way. Comment down below if you like what videos you want, like a certain topic, and I'll try to get on it. So yeah, guys, peace. Until the next one.